This video is sponsored by Stream. Stream is an SDK that allows you to easily build chat apps similar to the apps that you use in your everyday life, such as WhatsApp. It allows you to build customizable UI that can adapt to any use case. They have chat features such as file uploads, GIFs, and reactions, which can be seen on the demo examples within their page. Stream makes it easy for developers to quickly add real-time messaging to applications. Try out their API with the link in the description box. Small teams and individuals can sign up for a free account under their maker account with no credit card required. Hey, and welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at useful iOS development tools that I use and I think are really useful in every day-to-day -day iOS development. And if you actually have a favorite tool that I don't mention, I'd love to hear it in the comment section below. So let's get straight into it. So the first tool we're going to be looking at is Bakery. This is a free Mac app and it's built by an indie dev called Jordi Broom, who you can follow on Twitter at Jordi Broom. And you can download this app from the Mac store. And the reason why this app is a great resource is for two reasons. The first is that you can actually use it to generate dummy placeholder icons for your apps. So if you're just building something like a prototype, you just want to give it a nice app icon. And you can also use it as well to generate your own app icons to use within your project. So let's actually see how we can do this now. If you actually want to learn more how to set up app icons in your app, you can check out my video, Add App Icons in Swift UI. So obviously, I've already got this installed on my machine. So if you just open up the application, you can see here that you have a whole bunch of options that you can choose for your own custom app icons so you can change the color if you wanted to you can add labels onto it as well to signify if it's beta or whatnot you can also change the icons that show up on here as you can see here by shuffling them and you can also select them from the list here on the side if you wanted to which is pretty cool now it's worth noting that in the apple apple guidelines you can't actually use the system icons or emojis as your app store icon or you know your app can get rejected which is why it actually says this message here is a bit of a disclaimer but what you can do is you can actually use this tool like I said before to generate your own app icons for your app so I've actually got a logo on my desktop saved so if I actually just drag this onto the application you can now see that by dragging the image onto the app icon here we can actually now hit this where we generate our icons like so and we now get this we now get this little window that we can use to easily drag into our xcode so we can have our own app icon so we just go into xcode and if we just go into our assets folder if we just delete the default app icon we can now copy this in and now we have an app icon in the spot in a matter of seconds so this is a great tool for quickly generating app icons and using it within your apps now the next tool that i found great on the mac app store that you can use is an app called sf menu bar now this is an app developed by another indie dev called jeff hackworth who you can actually follow on twitter at jeff hackworth and you gotta love indie devs because at the time of this recording the app is three pound 39 but honestly i think it's a steal since in my opinion it just makes working with sf symbols so much easier this menu bar app is always present in your menu bar so you can easily search for symbols whilst you work and just simply copy the name of it and paste it into your project files as well which I'll show you in a second. Another great addition is that if you're someone who uses keyboard shortcuts you can actually use them to also easily add SF symbols into your application. Just to show you how this works if I just go into a project here in Swift UI I've actually got this already open in my menu bar so you can see here i can just quickly go to the menu bar and i'm able to actually search for sf symbol if i want to look for a check mark for example i can just select the check mark sf symbol here like so and that's now copied that into my pasteboard if i want to show a check mark in here all i need to do is just use the image and then we want to use a system name and i can just simply paste that in like so so it's really quick and simple and easy. So whilst you're developing, you can just quickly paste in and use any kind of SF symbol that you want, like so. So it's a great application, as you can see there, as the SF symbol updates. The next application that I'm going to go through is an app called Xcodes. Now this isn't actually on the App Store and instead you're actually going to need to install this from their GitHub repository and they have a nice installation guide that shows you how you can get this onto your machine. Essentially what this app allows you to do is it allows you to easily manage your Xcode versions on your machine. Now I'm just going to open up the application to show you that now, just one second. So this is what the application looks like. 
Now, in my opinion, personally, I don't really like downloading Xcode from the App Store since there's been some times where we've made where they've made updates and it's been released with bugs within it. So I personally like to choose specifically what version that I want to develop my iOS apps in. Now, what this tool allows you to do, like I said, it is easily manage and download release beta and alpha versions of Xcode all within this nice UI, which is just simple and clean. You can also filter out these versions as well if you want to target if you to actually install a specific type of Xcode as well. And also due to the built-in packages that it uses as well, it's way faster to download it through this tool than it would be to download it through the App Store. So just to show you this here now, what I can actually do is I can actually refresh to see if there's any new versions. I can actually filter out as well to show only the release versions or I can show beta only, or I could just show everything. I can also see as well here, which versions I have currently have installed on my machine, as well as I can select a version and view the release notes in terms of what is new within this build. And if I wanted to, I can also choose to install it from this option here as well. So on the general tab, you will need to sign in with your Apple ID because this is what's actually used to actually download the version of Xcode from the Apple developer um, website. You can also set up your options for when you want to get automatic updates as well, as well as other things. Now within the advanced section, you can actually choose where you want to install this and you can choose whether you want to automatically have a symbol link between the Xcode apps as well as where you should actually download it from. So these are two options where you can actually download the versions of Xcode from. And we also have this thing here called a downloader. This area too is a lot quicker than using the standard URL session. So it actually helps you install Xcode a lot quicker. And then finally, within the experiments, you can actually choose to turn on this option in terms of unzipping Xcode to make it quicker. So this is a great tool, in my opinion, in terms of managing Xcode on your device. So I highly recommend you install this and get you can use it as well. Postman is a free tool that allows you to test your APIs that you're working with. What do I mean by this? Well, when you're working with an API, you actually want to make sure that it's working and the calls are all good before you even write a single line of code. A big mistake is to start writing code to see your service logic isn't working only to find out that was the API. Now with Postman, you can either download the Mac app or use their site directly. Now me personally, I prefer to use the you know Mac application because you know we're keeping it Mac we're keeping it all Mac around here. So let's actually see how we can use it to call an API in terms of what happens. So I've got this JSON placeholder type.com website and there's this API here where you can actually fetch all the to-dos or use them whatnot. It's just dummy data. So we're just gonna test this out with this to-dos one here rather than specific specifically getting an individual to-do. We're going to get all of them. Now in Postman, if you want to, you can hit the new Button. and if you choose a new HTTP request you'll get presented with this panel here where you can actually choose to execute some kind of request so I'm just going to paste that in here now and what we're able to do is we're able to actually send this API request now and you can see that we're able to check and inspect the response that we get back from the service so now I can quickly see that the API is fine now also another good thing that you could do with Postman as well is if you're working with a bunch of endpoints and you need to you know just inspect them regularly you can actually save them within a collection so if you hit save here you can actually give it a name so we're just going to say test to do's and then what we can do is create a collection called to do requests And now we're able to choose this collection and then save it within here. So whenever we open up Postman again, we now just have this all set up and all we need to do is click on this request and hit send and it will work just fine. So this is a great tool for organizing and making sure that your APIs that you're interacting with within your application are all good. Now, this tool isn't a Mac app and instead it's actually a website. So it's called QuickType. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to easily turn JSON into Swift models. So what do I mean by this? Well, looking at our example, we actually have a model in our response. So we go back to Postman. We actually have a model here within our response. Now, sometimes this is quite a small model, but sometimes you can have models where there's loads of properties. Now, you don't want to have to type this out manually yourself every single time. So instead of doing this, what we can do is we can actually just copy our JSON response from here. And then what we're able to do in QuickType is actually paste that within here like so. 
and as you can see it actually automatically creates the swift struct for us now by default it's called welcome because that's the name here but we can actually change the name here to be to do to match what our you know struct is and you can see that it's automatically updated it and we now have our code that we can just simply copy into our swift file and you actually have a whole bunch of options here for stuff you can choose so you can actually say whether you want the coding keys or not so i can actually turn that off if i wanted to or we can also say we want to have an extension for url session so this will automatically generate the code for us for url session or alamo file so there's a whole bunch of options here and this just helps you quickly make sure that you can get your models within your applications. Now it's also worth noting that with tools like this, it's not always going to be 100% perfect. So sometimes you may need to tweak your code, but the fact that this does 90% of the work for you has already saved you a bunch of time. So this is great again. Now I mentioned five, but I thought I'd treat you with another one because you know, I'm such a kind guy. So the final tool that I want to show off is Twitter. Now you may be wondering why a social networking app? Well, on Twitter, there's an amazing community of iOS developers who you should be networking with, especially if are new to the game not only will this help you meet more like-minded people but twitter can be a great resource to learn new things get advice get help generate new ideas and even find that bit of motivation that you need to follow the right people now my, my experience the ios community has been nothing short of incredible so i highly recommend joining twitter and getting involved and if you want to find interesting people to follow just use the search terms such as swift ui or ios etc or you can even follow me on Twitter at TonsDev to find and see some interesting content that I post too. So that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed this video or if you have a tool that I didn't mention and you'd like to feature in the comment section below, then please do that by all means. Also as well, if you haven't already, I really appreciate it if you like this video as well as subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.